Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Your Tech Today. So this video is the final video for the View 4K television, the 55 inch Iconium TV. And uh, in this video I'm gonna do an in-depth review of the TV and show you all the apps that come in the TV and uh, what uh, formats, it's, uh, what, uh, you know, what it supports to the USB ports and uh, other uh, features of the TV which I might not have covered in the other videos. So this is going to be the in-depth review. I have used this TV for 15 days now and I think I have uh, tested it thoroughly and I will give you my verdict about the TV also. So first thing that we are going to look at is the hardware of the TV, what is the build quality, what is the thickness, what is the distance from the wall and those sorts of things. So let me take you to the TV. So we are really close to the TV right now and you can check out how thin the bezels are on the TV you can check out the clarity from nearby also this is an HD channel playing text also is very sharp there's a view logo here nice silver finish Looking at the back side, the side angle of the TV, you can see the thickness. It's not too thin, but it is quite thin for the price. You can see the mounting over there. The other screws that you're seeing are from the old TV, which were not compatible. So, this is the whole side. You can see it is a little difficult to plug in and plug out the USB devices and the other uh, HDMI ports and all especially the HDMI 3 and 4 which are HDMI 2.0 are really difficult to access and here is the IR receiver for the TV let's just check the reflectivity of the TV so it does come with an anti-reflective coating but as you can see my studio light is over there so that is a very bright source of light and that will show up and on top of that you can see there is a small bulb behind that also can be seen. Now that I moved my studio light a little far away you can see only that bulb is seen. So I would say the anti-reflective coating is quite good. It's not uh, too matte also and not uh, it's not glossy also. So it works well. In my room it works pretty well. Whenever I'm watching the TV I don't feel there is any distraction from reflections. So after switching off the TV, you can see how the reflectivity is. There I am. My house is a mess because of I shoot in the same place where, I, where is my living room. So you can see what the reflectivity is. I'm this close and it's like slightly reflective. There is a faint LED. When you switch on the TV, it switches off. Okay. So let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing I will talk about is the remote. The remote is a very nice build quality. So I will start from the top, you have your power button, input button, various select HDMI's and the various menu buttons. This is the settings button, this is the all apps button. If you press this, all the apps on the TV will open the menu. Up and down, OK. Back. Exit. This is the home button. Home button is also something which you press to select uh, different sources of video. And live TV is when it goes to the tuner which we won't be using volume channels play pause for the when you're playing something on the pen drive or the hard disk and the direct YouTube button if you press this YouTube opens so now that we have pressed the YouTube button let's check out the YouTube app 
so you use the arrow keys to move around you can sign into your account you can search for a video so when you press search you can search for anything let me just type in my channel so the typing is a difficult task on this TV but the best thing is you can connect a wireless keyboard to it which I use my Logitech keyboard that's a wireless keyboard with a built-in mouse pad so that is what I use and when you connect it to the USB port it will work as a keyboard so we can use that for typing so I have searched for my channel now to select it and that's it you can start playing the video now one of the questions a lot of people were having were that can you change the quality can you play YouTube videos in 4k the answer is no because the TV does not give you any option to select any quality you can use captions but there is no options of selecting the quality so one more amazing thing about the YouTube app is that you go into the settings you go to pair a device so this is just like a Google Chromecast sort of a thing where you can open your YouTube app on your phone and uh, you need to press that button it will come in the YouTube app right there so once you press that button it will show the TV model over here you can't see it right now because it's out of focus but it will show the TV model here and you just press that and that's it the TV gets paired to your YouTube app on your phone and then it won't show anything it's not like screen mirroring search for your channel or the video you want to watch press that it'll say play that's it the video starts playing on your TV so this is not playing through your phone it's, the TV is connecting to YouTube server and playing it via Wi-Fi see and if I lock my phone also the video keeps on playing you can minimize the app still it will play you can play and pause the video from your phone just focus it see press next I guess there's not nothing in the playlist that is why I didn't play so it's sort of like Google Chromecast only one of the good features of the TV as it will not uh, you know restrict you from using your phone while you're watching YouTube on your TV and it's easy to control so you your phone and your TV have to be on the same Wi-Fi network for this to work so now I'm going to press the home button which I showed you before over here when you press the home button this sort of menu opens where it says live TV, VOD is video on demand, media and apps so live TV is what your HDMI is in and you can select various sources here but none of them are connected only HDMI 2 is connected then is video on demand so in this some pre-selected apps are there like AL.on and Toon something and Daily Motion and TED and YouTube so these are some of the apps which TV has only set it over here so we can't really change this uh, layout next is media where your pen drive is connected so pen drive hard disk your network devices your computer on the network if you're sharing some files from there they will show up here I will get to this and next is all the apps so you can go up and select all the apps but this you can do by pressing the app button also so we will start by the first one which is live TV this is simple So you press that and live TV starts. 
So you can change your channel by your DTH provider or your set top box provider. Next is video on demand. So this I will go in detail in all apps. Next is media. In media you can select picture, video or music. So this is the subcategories. If I select pictures, it will search all the devices connected to the TV and it will only search for the pictures in those devices, which we don't want. So media is, includes three categories, music, video and picture. And when you go to all, that is when it will show you all the files that are there. So this is one of the pen drives which is connected. This is another one. This is my Dropbox. This is my TP-Link router through which my desktop is connected, which you can see here. So if I open that, it has already put it in categories. Go to videos, then all videos and all my videos which I've shared on from my computer in the other room over Wi-Fi through the TP-Link router will show up here. So you just press that and it starts playing over the network. But the problem with this is that your Wi-Fi router has to be really fast. If, if your file size is very huge, suppose this is a 5 GB file, so it might get stuck like what is happening with me because the router is not able to match the you know, data rate which the TV wants or the video file wants. Probably this file is playing at about 6, MB, 6, 6 megabits per second, but my router is only supporting up to 2.5. So playing over the network is possible. Then playing over USB as you saw in my previous videos where I do the video test for this. It plays through USB pen drives and hard disks really well. So it does support uh, you know USB splitters also, the hubs. So I have connected uh, one hub which is one into, one into four uh, it splits. I have connected it, connected it to the USB 3 port. So it is uh, running all the pen drives and everything through that hub only because it's very difficult to access the USB ports behind. So I put an extension cable and put a hub behind. One thing to note is that you have to uh, connect pen drives or hard disks which are NTFS formatted only. It will not support uh, FAT32 or XFAT uh, format, formatted uh, pen drives or uh, hard disks. So keep that in mind. So this review wouldn't be complete without me playing some video samples from a pen drive. So this is Terminator Genesis, a very high quality file. I think this is about 20 GB Blu-ray file at full HD. I will not be putting any audio into this video because it might create copyright problems. See, it's forwarding easily. It's such a huge file. It's playing from a pen drive and still it's forwarding easily, so TV has no problem handling all this. And you can see the quality. So now probably you can feel the quality a little better. It's a really dark movie, so the scenes are dark and reflections would be seen on the screen. At least the camera is picking it up. In real life, I can't see any reflections on the TV. So this was a full HD sample. So for detailed uh, uh, audio and video review, you go to my previous video and you can check it out over there. So let's start with the main category, which is all the apps. Go to apps, view all apps. I will go in detail in each app now. First is media, as we saw, it will play media from the pen drives, hard disk, USB ports, network. Next is YouTube, which I've already shown you. Daily Motion works the same way. As you know, uh, it's a site like YouTube, and you can play Daily Motion videos. This is AccuWeather app. So I have put in my location, and it is showing me the weather and the forecast. You can add more cities, you can delete, you can change the degree to Fahrenheit, and all that. Nice app, but we have our phones to do this. Picasa you can use, I have put in my account and it will open Picasa. All your Google photos also go into this, so I don't want to open this and let you guys into my private photos. Now this is the Opera TV browser. This is a browser 
internet uh, explorer sort of a thing and I don't know why you would use it but you can so you use your uh, remote to move this mouse around and then when you click on this a keyboard opens and you type in where you want to go and that's how you can browse suppose I type Yahoo See, so it has that word prediction also so you just type in Yahoo and you gotta press enter now this is really irritating I don't know but at least the option is there so it does, the TV does support Hindi font, Marathi font, I guess, and English of course, but rest of the languages it doesn't support. So Yahoo has opened, I mean the Google has searched for Yahoo. Now I'm going to select Yahoo. Feel free to forward the video if you are not interested in this feature and you want to see something else. So you can forward throughout the video. So that's it, yahoo.com has opened. So the browser works. Not very useful, but yes, it works. Next is the Opera TV store. This is where you can get extra apps for the TV, which are already not listed on the apps page, which I just showed you. So it's going to take a little bit of time to open each of the apps. Again, this video is going to be very long. So that's how these apps are. We have already got the TED app and all these things so frankly none of the apps are really useful I mean they are there just for the sake of giving apps Vimeo is there if you want to watch but you could just watch it on YouTube eBay Facebook which is already installed I don't know why anybody would See, Instagram maybe you can use if you like to see your Instagram photos or your friends photos on a big screen. So these are all the apps. So suppose you want to install something, just open it. And it won't say install, it will just say open. And it will open that app from the Opera TV store. taking a lot of time so I feel they have made this TV for the US market or some other market other than India because most of the apps don't work gaming center I have shown you in my gaming video it has some games some 2d sort of games which puzzle games arcade games and all that which we don't play I mean, at least I don't play, but they are there for your kids to enjoy or something. I will come back to any view cast in a minute. I'll just cover the other ones. Ted is there if you watch Ted uh, videos, Facebook, Twitter. So then I'll come to Viaway. Viaway is an online uh, TV subscription. Uh, it's an international brand only. It's not an Indian company. I made an account. The TV does get activated on the app but uh, none of the channels are really useful nothing is there in that which you would watch and if you really want to watch that uh, via way tv you have to pay some five dollars or three dollars a month on on your computer you need to go to your account and activate it then maybe some content will come but i don't think it's useful for us most of the channels which i saw were uh, you know russian and other languages I'm just showing you uh, this in detail because I don't think anybody else would show you. Tune goggles again for your kids or you know even if you enjoy it it's okay. So this when uh, this app gives you cartoons and uh, I did play something through this. I'll just open the app and show it to you. 
and i just want to tell you that uh, sometimes some of these apps don't open they don't connect to the internet correctly or their server might be busy because these are not things which are widely used in the world so their server can be down and some other issues can be there so there are now three rhymes let's play one of them and see so nursery rhymes that's nice if i had a kid i would really use this i think one of my friends uh, daughter was here that day and she really enjoyed this feature okay next is yup tv yup tv is in india also now but this is the international version of the app which is installed i contacted yup tv made an account wasted one hour of my life and finally they said the no your tv is not supported view tvs we have stopped uh, supporting so that was a good waste of time so i there is no use of putting that uh, i mean going through that yup tv i would suggest don't waste your time you can uh, otherwise the yup tv app is really good you can use it on your cell phone you can use it on your computer and you can watch live indian channels and uh, international channels also for a very low subscription rate I think it is hundred rupees a month in India, and you get about two fifty channels. You need to have a good internet. So this AOL uh, uh, this thing the app. So again, news and whatever you know. This does work. The first time I got the TV, this was not working. See now also it's not working. Let's see this. So again, it, these apps don't work most of the time. don't buy this tv for the apps seriously so i'll show you plex and any cast in a second kiddos is again a channel which i watched that day because i was testing this tv and uh, i happened to see aladdin's uh, story again this is for kids only but uh, it is again in a american accent let me just play something and um fairy tales okay yeah i remember i went into fairy tales and then i went into aladdin i used to like aladdin a lot when i was a kid so i thought i'll listen to this so it is it plays these nice uh, fairy tales which but they are in american english accent they are not in an indian accent and they are interesting i found out a lot about aladdin in detail <laughs> so you can see how it plays i think it will play an ad in the start so very nice quality video it connected immediately to the network so this kiddos app is good i'm sure your young kids will really enjoy this now i will come to the main two apps the first one was anycast and the second is plex now plex is something uh, it's called a plex uh, it's a website you can go to the website create an account and it lets you share your media on your on the network so it can be a local network or you can share it over the internet also so go to plex website open an account there is a easy setup process on your computer you have to do it and then you can install an app in your phone also and watch your media on the phone that app is paid by the way but on this tv the first time you open uh, plex server it will say this is uh, you need to activate your tv on the plex website so open an account in plex then uh, after your account is open put some movies tell plex that these are my movies it will read those it will add it to the plex library where uh, you can see here when i click movies so it will read the name of the file in your hard disk and it will download the artwork i mean the you know the poster for it the the details suppose you know 
it looks really nice and this is by the way playing from my computer in the other room over wi-fi and but the interface is so nice so it feels like you own this beautiful collection of movies with all the information it tells the audio quality which is 5.1 in this movie director cast the you know the story and tells you the year i really love this app it tells the quality so i can watch this on my phone i can watch this on this tv i can watch it on my computer i can watch it on my laptop wherever plex is there you can install it easily you can install it on a mac you can install it in linux you can make a separate uh, nas which is plex you know uh, plex can be installed in that and it will just share the media over that so you can add videos photos music everything it's a very nice uh, service this is the free version and uh, nothing to do with the tv the tv comes with the full app but in the plex uh, website in your account you can pay for the premium service in which you can play in uh, this thing also you know over the internet this is only over local network so right now i'll play this movie and i'll show you how beautifully it works that is if it works <laughs> so uh, i know there is a lot of delay because somehow my wi-fi router is not working very well it's not giving the speed that it should so i was already watching this movie uh, about 1 minute so it has continued from there so you can see it's a very old movie the graininess is not uh, is there in the print itself it's not the tv's fault so you can change the settings you can select the quality you want to play at subtitles maybe they are there i don't know okay so let's play this so it's not as fast as a pen drive but thing is if you have a media server or a computer which has all your media you can easily share all the videos and nicely arranged onto your tv so this covers plex again any doubts you can ask me in the comments now we will go to any view cast so i need to shift my angle and show it to you so uh, i got a lot of questions about how to share your cell phone screen on the tv does it support that well yes it does the app here is any view cast when you open this it says waiting for external device to connect so i have my note 4 here i'll just focus okay go into your menu and screen mirroring so i hope you can see that if i switch it on it has detected the tv immediately okay you can see there so you can see my phone has been mirrored but there is a slight amount of del delay so it does work only thing is your phone should be supporting it and uh, let's lock the phone and see what happens it shows the clock unlock again it is back so what you can use this is for sharing your you know images and it does not work for gaming because there is so much of delay you really cannot game so maximum you can share your uh, photos some app you want to show somebody or something like that one cool thing is if you switch on the camera picture in picture keeps on going infinitely Okay, so you can do that, and you can see the delay. I 
again i would say this is because of the interference in this uh, building one more thing i want to clarify is that if you connect your uh, cell phone with the any view cast or the screen mirroring it does not mean your phone will disconnect from the internet it will still work and it will just create another wifi connection directly with the tv so you don't have to worry about that i think that is a very good feature so this covers all the apps in the tv so rest i will show you the settings okay so let's go back to hdmi or live tv as we call it each hdmi signal or each uh, usb port where you plug in a device will have its own settings so when you press the settings button this opens up so these are the recently uh, changed settings but when you go to all it will show all the settings like picture picture you have different modes this you have to tune it yourself i have done it for my liking and i have tuned the tv according to what i like but i will just go through them and show you so i keep the dynamic backlight off because it darkens in dark scenes it darkens the light too much but if you like that you can do that it will increase your contrast ratio you have advanced picture settings so in this ultra smooth motion is there like uh, one of my viewers yesterday had a doubt that samsung has a 200 hertz refresh rate why this has only 60 hertz so they just call it samsung calls it clear motion they call it ultra smooth motion it just makes uh, adds extra digital frames in whatever is going on on the tv to make it look little smooth but in my frank opinion it looks a little artificial so i never use that noise reduction i keep it at low but you can keep it in middle or high also doesn't matter adaptive contrast also makes black a little more black color temperature can be warm it's a little reddish cool is little bluish i keep it at standard i have tuned the colors a little bit so that is there so in sound you have uh, sound uh, as standard you have theater and all that late night will reduce the bass a lot dbx audio dbx tv i didn't sort of like it you know it is something like an artificial surround sound it does work really well but it just reduces the vocals a lot the speech of the person what you're watching so i sort of didn't like it so i switched it off a lot of uh, detailed settings are there suppose your uh, content is running fast the audio is running faster than your uh, uh, video so you can do the lip sync you can change the or digital audio output it does has a uh, have a optical output so you can uh, make it raw whatever the original it will pass through you can switch it off it has a tv speaker out uh, i mean the audio return channel on an hdmi hdmi one has that one or two one of them has that so when you connect it to the laptop it will go hdmi will take the audio to the tv and then if you have an av receiver attached so you can get the audio back from the tv to the av receiver to play the audio through that so that's a very good feature and uh, i don't know what this is audio out variable audio out fixed so the 3.5 mm jack is there on the side of the tv i connect my speakers to that and it works really well you can control the volume of the 3.5 mm jack from here also so you don't have to change the volume of the speakers you can just control it from the remote these are not useful unless you are using doordarshan now so network it has a lan port as well as wifi in my unboxing video i have shown you how to put your a uh, wifi password and uh, you can change the name of the tv you can uh, switch off the screen sharing you know feature and you can get your in network information so here you can set the time and language hdmi function mhl if you have a cell phone adapter which goes into the micro usb port of the cell phone it can give out a uh, hdmi signal to the tv and the tv can receive it 
So instead of screen mirroring, if you want to use screen mirroring for gaming, I would suggest attach your phone through MHL and then uh, you can game by buying another USB controller or connecting your mouse, you can game with that. That will be instant, there will be no lag. Again, you can uh, upgrade the firmware. That's it. So that covers all the features of the TV. Now I will come to the cons. The cons are sometimes when you press the, you know, the, uh, this thing, the remote button, there can be, sometimes it might miss the press. There's one thing I've noticed. Secondly, it takes a little long time to switch on. See, I've switched off the TV now. Now let's switch it on. I've pressed the power button. It takes a lot of time. Maybe the system needs time to start. That is one more thing which is bad about the TV. Third thing is in YouTube, you cannot select the quality. Maybe in a firmware update, they can change that. Thirdly, you cannot change the audio. When you are playing a file from a pen drive or hard drive, a video file, it, ha it has two audio tracks. You will not be able to change the audio tracks. Whatever is the default which the TV detects, it will play. Like I have the amazing Spider-Man movie. It is a Spanish track. A Spanish audio is the first track. So it will just play that. It will not play the in Hindi, which is the second one. I mean the English, the second one. So same like that. That is one more thing which is bad about it. Thirdly, to forward in a in the pen drive movies, you need to press the forward button and reach that point and then you know play the video. Whereas I feel they should have come up with a faster way of doing it. You know, just press next, uh, like the arrow key to the right and it should go forward, 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 fast. So if somebody wants to forward slowly, they can press the forward button. And uh, that would be one more thing that I would say. Like I will show you in this. You can see some of Bangalore also in this. Suppose I want to forward now. Either I have an option to press the forward button on the remote and play again so pause play and then go here then one two times four times so i think it should have been better implemented you have this uh, subtitle option you have everything repeat zoom everything but you do not have an option to select the audio track so this is one more con rest uh, the pros i will talk about now I don't think there is any other con. The pros are beautiful display, great viewing angles, absolutely no shift in colors when you go from side to side, up and down also, vertically that is, and horizontally no shift in colors. I don't know, it is not an IPS panel, which it's not mentioned it's an IPS panel, but it should be, I think, a VA panel at least, because it is giving very good motion, it is very, very good refresh rates, and it's maintaining the colors also when you viewing angles and colors when you shift from side to side. The brightness is really good and it handles every type of video signals very well, I feel, except the Blu-ray M2 TS format. It runs everything else. The price is very good, 60 to 63,000. You can get it for 60 also, I've heard somewhere in the local retail stores. Sound of the TV is very good. I have seen uh, very expensive TVs, about 2 lakhs and all from LG and Samsung, in which they are so thin that they cannot put any speakers inside, a substantial amount of speaker inside. So what is the use, you know? You need to connect a sound bar or another system to it to watch TV. I think that is the most uh, stupid and hilarious thing that TV manufacturers can do, which View has not done. They have made the body a little thick and they have put decent speakers inside that you can use the TV. And uh, it's the same thing with cell phones, they are making them so thin that there is no place to put batteries inside and you run out of battery half a day. So I would also prefer that make a phone big enough that you can put a decent sized battery. So same thing goes here. It looks beautiful, another pro. Remote is good. Uh, the HDMI 2.0 is good. Uh, I didn't see any other TV with that in this price range. It is 4K and the the anti-reflective coating is good, the blacks and the white levels are too good. I don't know how they have done that. 
you can see the black bars on top are absolutely black it feels like an amulet display so the, everything works really well i can go on about the pros more i feel but i think you get the idea from all the series of videos that i've done that <laughs> it is a good tv in this price range and you shouldn't be expecting anything more and uh, so this covers the review of the tv one more thing i will just show you is the power consumption of the tv so i have connected a power meter the tv is off right now it does come with a three pin plug so as you can see this is the first time i've seen that that standby the tv is taking zero watts so it's taking such less amount of power at standby that it's at least the meter is showing zero watts now let's switch it on such a huge tv you need to consider how much power it takes so as you can see slowly it is going up so at a black screen it is about 89 watts okay so at this full brightness it has gone up to 156 watts that's quite a lot of power the box says 120 but it is consuming a much more amount of power so guys this covers my review of the view 55 inch iconium 4k ultra hd television it was a difficult review to do there were so many things to study in the tv another point you viewer asked is can you attach a webcam to it and do skype calls no you can't because the skype uh, app is not there so any other questions please let me know in the comment section please subscribe to my channel and uh, i will improve my videos i'll get you better products interesting products interesting videos tech related videos non tech related videos so i'm just starting and i need your support hope you like this video and uh, please like dislike the video appropriately and comment subscribe and i'll see you in my next video thanks for watching bye bye